Hey, it's CrossFitTracking.com here with a full review for the Coros Apex Pro. After using it for a few weeks, you know, obviously I did the initial comparison, initial review, the midweek, as well as this one after testing it for a longer period of time and trying to really strain out and test the load capabilities. I'll go through some of the basic overall features of the watch. I'm gonna do, at the end of this part of the video, I'm gonna do a hands-on, we'll look at things more in depth. So I'll just sort of speed through some of the highlights. Um, again, like I've said in previous videos, I feel like the weight, the design, the feel of the watch, the straps are excellent. Um, obviously it's 47 millimeters across, 13.4 millimeters thick, and 59 grams. That comes in considerably lighter than the Garmin Fenix 6 Pro, which is an extra a little over a millimeter thicker and 83 grams versus the 59 grams on the Apex Pro. Um, it's lighter than the Polar Vantage V and it's coming in a little bit heavier than the 945, but same, same screen. They actually have a great build quality. It's got a titanium bezel with an aluminum backing. So you get the lightest sort of combination of things. It's got a sapphire crystal. So I feel like all those things tie together. Plus I just love the overall look and the layout, you know, the three buttons, it's got a rotating button, which helps you unlock the watch as well as change screens, as well as when you go into the profiles, change between those things as well. So overall it's great. The strap I feel like is great, um, better than even on the um, Garmin or the Polar. I feel like the strap is, is uh, very comfortable and it's got a thickness to it that I really like. Um, I think you look, look immediately after that to the cost at $499. I feel like it's a little bit on the higher side, but with the quality of the components, meaning the sapphire um, uh, crystal as well as the titanium bezel, I feel like you're getting a lot for the money. Um, and it's got a lot of the high level components or functionality, although I'll talk a little bit about how I feel like they should grow that a little bit better. The quality of the screen is a good transflective screen. I feel like it's pretty much on par with the Garmin series and the Vantage series and would compare to the Suunto series. Um, it's 80% brighter than, you know, I've done a backlight test. There's another video on the backlight comparison of different watches, but it's 80% brighter than the Polar Vantage V, 40% brighter than the 245. And on the Phoenix 6 series, if you, because you can adjust the brightness, which you can't do on any of those previous watches, if you jack the volume, the, the brightness all the way up, it's actually 60% less on the average bright light, bright light uh, backlight test that I did on a number of those. Uh, functionality, uh, the watch operates really well. It's very simple and easy to functionally, you know, get to the main screens. It's functionally easy to add laps to a workout, functionally easy to start a workout, functionally easy to pair. It does pair to a Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus. Um, dynamics for any of the sort of sideline pieces that you want to link into the watch. Um, obviously this is a CrossFit training, so the main thing we're linking in is just a heart rate chest monitor. Um, but the watch functionality was great. Notifications came up. As I mentioned in a previous review, the text size, you can't adjust on notifications when they come up. It's a little bit harder to read than I found on the Garmin series of watches. Um, you can change, you know, any of the watch faces to a collection of a fixed set of, you know, a number of watch faces, and you can only choose five to upload to the watch for the quick change. But overall, getting into the functions, we'll look at that in a second. The app was really easy to use. I feel like it was, you know, it accomplished all the things I'd want to get. Although some of the screen layouts, I feel like could be better as the way they assess or they visually show you some of the components. Uh, the battery life was, was incredible. It wasn't as long as, the others, you know, as the, I'm sorry, the website would post on 30 days, but overall I felt like, you know, it was about, you know, nine, you know, 10 to 11% burn rate per day. And that's with the heart rate always on. And I didn't make any adjustments for the backlight. So it has a do not disturb, which is during the sleep period, but the backlight will come on throughout the night if I'm moving around. So I didn't turn on a nighttime mode and change any of those components. So that probably played a little role into extending it out, but I still feel like nine to 10 days of total use is great. Uh, using it for both workouts, including GPS and some of those workouts, it, you know, that's, that's where the average time came from. The heart rate sensor, you know, it, it, it performed well, like I said in previous reviews or previous you know, steps of this review, um, it's about 87% accurate to the average heart rate when compared to a chest strap but it's only about 40% accurate in capturing the peak zone, the highest level of heart rate zone that you could capture, which obviously ties into how it evaluates the difficulty of the workout and how that difficulty of workout evaluates into the load tracking. Um, 
So chest strap all the way, I think with any device and you can get a cheap Ant Plus chest strap, which will work great for CrossFit workouts. Um, singular workout evaluation, I'm finding that it is coming on really right in, in parallel with the Garmin series. I didn't compare it, I, mean, I compared it to the Polar, but the Polar uses a different training metric. They use something called TRIMP to evaluate the difficulty of a workout. And Garmin uses the same type, which is anaerobic and aerobic, and they use the same scale. So obviously they have some engineering, uh, they, maybe they hired somebody from Garmin to you know, build the watch or build the concepts. But it's coming in right on point. I'm finding that the load, um, I'm sorry, the recovery tracking is similar to Garmin's and the training effect tracking is coming in very, very similar. So getting some of the same numbers, which is great, which just means, in my opinion, for a new startup watch company, you're getting the same level or what I would appear to be the same quality of training metrics from a singular workout, both on the recovery side, as well as on the um, evaluation of aerobic and anaerobic impact side of the workout. Um, when you look at long-term load tracking, we'll show you, and I'll show you in a minute, but I feel like they need to do some work on how they're evaluating load over a period of time. So what Garmin does and what Polar does is they say, well, you're at this fitness level and here's the, how the cumulative load of these workouts based on the intensity of these workouts is building or affecting your body over a period of time. And the load tracking is, is just not as, um, up to par. I don't feel like it's very useful and I'll show you why in just a second. And they don't have the wellness component. So this ties into the sleep evaluation. I feel like the sleep evaluation is a little bit simple. A lot of the other watch manufacturers have gotten into more detail for sleep because it, it obviously directly applies to your recovery. Um, but they don't have the wellness aspects built into the watch yet. So they're sort of shallow in the sleep category and they don't do anything specialized like Garmin does the body battery, which evaluates your heart rate variability which they evaluate as stress throughout the day. And Polar does the nightly recharge, which does a, a, a autonomic nervous system uh, recharge calculation or assessment, as well as some of the Polar watches do an orthostatic test, but I think they're moving completely to the nightly recharge. I actually feel like it's a, a better overall component. So with that, let's get into the hands-on. It has been a great overall watch experience. I feel like it is a great solution. It is a better looking solution in my opinion and better design solution in my opinion that just needs to work on the longer term evaluation of your training as it relates to you know, training over a long period of days, weeks, and months. So let's get into the hands-on. Okay, so looking at the hands-on side of things, you can obviously see the, um, the backlight here and the overall brightness. You can't adjust the backlight uh, titanium bezel to put in, uh, button press. You know, here, I feel like the button press is a good medium size it's not like a significant click it does have a haptic feedback when you do it and then you got the scroll so the scroll will obviously operate the screens when you're in the workout but it always i just have the auto lock set on which means that the watch after a minute of non-use won't do anything won't activate and so you roll it all the way up and you see that unlock appear you can set it to push in for a period of seconds or you can turn it off altogether but um you can see the Obviously the heart rate sensor there, the straps, 22 millimeter um, easy switch straps. But looking at the screens, just to give you an overview of the watch like we've done before, <clears throat> you have the main screen here. This is your overall summary of stats for the day. You can't click into it. There's no other stats available. It just gives you your active calories. Like I've mentioned before, this does not include, and then even in the app itself does not include your resting calories. Um, the amount of exercise you've done today, the number of stairs. And I think they calculate this obviously just from the barometric altimeter, but compared to what Garmin does on days when I've just run hills, I'll get, you know, 40 um, stairs. I'm not sure they have the same calculation metric, like meaning that your barometric altimeter tracks you going up a certain distance over a period of time, over a you know short period of time. But either way, um, that's how it does it. Your steps for the day, you scroll down and you get the heart rate. Further, you get the foot elevation for the barometric altimeter, and then you get the pressure itself. You get the temperature, and then you get your list of, and if you do like this, please subscribe and um, like the video. It helps the channel. But um, these are not the ones that I would put in here. So 
I've said in previous videos, I feel like they should have uh, the AI trainer, which I'll show you a second, which estimates your stamina as well as links you to your logbook, um, as well as um, the load tracking should be in here and maybe the fitness index calculation should be in here. I don't have a need necessarily um, all heart rate is at least somewhat more relevant. Um, I don't have a need to see my elevation at any point in time, just on a general work day or the barometric pressure um, or the temperature necessarily. So when, one of the things that is great about what Chorus has done is it is a touch screen, but the touch screen is not always enabled. So you can click in on with the one button press on any of these charts and it, you can scroll side to side, which I think is actually kind of genius because in a lot of watches that have touch screen, I find them to be a little finicky and not as very useful. This is actually functionally a good way to approach it. Now, looking at the overall capabilities of the watch from the fitness tracking, and then we'll look at the app to sort of see how it evaluates things. You can go in and do, you can't add profiles, but you can use any of these basic profiles to track um, a workout. I tend to use gym cardio when tracking CrossFit. And then sometimes if I'm doing like I did a, a Murph yesterday, I use GPS cardio to track the one mile run before and after. Um, so these are the basic profiles you can get quickly into the system here. And then this is the uh, stamina as well as recovery time tracking. Uh, the stamina will deplete relatively quickly. And so your body, you know, it's not necessarily targeted on one point days till recovery that I've seen, but I haven't tracked or visually watched the stamina relative to the recovery time, but this is the two components. This recovery time is cumulative like you would find in a Garmin where you do a workout and it says, you know, how many hours that workout caused you to need to recover. It accumulates here and then you put, you know, one button press and you'll get into any particular workout. When you look at a particular workout on the watch itself, if you're using just the GPS cardio or the regular cardio, it'll just give you basic stats. So it doesn't give you the workout difficulty evaluation built into that. So hopefully that's something they'll update in the future. You can get those stat components in the run app where it'll give you the aerobic and anaerobic training effect as well as the recovery time from that particular running session, which I thought was fantastic because even in Garmin, you can't historically look back at a workout and see how much it impacted your needed recovery time. So it's all built into the AI trainer, which I think should be a primary widget on the app. So that's the basic overview. The profiles seem to be broad enough. Now with CrossFit tracking, obviously you just really want gym cardio, you want run. Um, maybe you do some of these other things as a part of your just overall training plan. On the main watch screens, um, so you click into the bottom button, you hold that down, and you can change the watch screen, watch faces. You can change the colors of them, but you get to load five watch faces at any time. And then there's like 20 or 25 you can choose from in the watch to upload to the watch. Um, and then I use it, you know, obviously I use the alarm. So you can set multiple alarms, you know, certain days of the week. I use it for timer for intermittent fasting. You can do a stopwatch. It's easy just to navigate. One thing that's interesting about any menu in the Coro system is when you go out of this and then you go back into it, it goes back to wherever you were. Um, you know, I feel like that is not... It seems like it should go back to the top of the list, but it just goes back to where you were, good, better, otherwise. The SBO2, it does have a pulse ox sensor in the back. Um, it will track it whenever you tell it to track it, but I don't find the information very valuable. So you click into the pulse ox, the SBO2 sensor, it's saying it's wanting to measure me now, I'm not wearing it, it's not gonna work out so well. And then it shows you the elevation, and you can see SBO2 based on any elevation. Um, it last. 24 hours and last three days. And these these will change in color based on what it evaluated your SPO2. So you can see the red lights coming off my finger there because it's saying, where it, where are you? Um, you can't get it to stop, you know, so it's continuing trying to measure. But they need to update, you know, how this functionally um, ties into a useful, you know, tracking parameter. Um, but at least that it's built in, they can update it better for the future. So you can broadcast your heart rate to things. It's got a compass built in. Obviously, you have system set edit modes. The night mode will uh, change some of the functional turning on of the screen. I haven't been activating it, so I haven't really evaluated like what it exactly accomplishes. Um, 
backlight stays on until next sunrise. Okay, so there it is. It turns off the backlight, so that would probably save you time if you go in and consciously. They should probably tie this, the night mode, into the do not disturb mode, uh, which is built in. But then looking at the app, and I'm going to show a few things because as it relates to CrossFit tracking, obviously we want to see how our workouts are evaluated. So in the main landing page, you get how many calories you burned, exercise time, steps, heart rate, and sleep. So the sleep, as I've said, is, is a little too simple. This is actually visually useful, but when you go into any one of these, it gives you this big old screen. And that, to me, is not as helpful. Now, you can click on a time period and see that that was a deep sleep period, and that was a deep loop period, and that was light. But it doesn't break down REM sleep. And then this, I feel like, should be that picture you saw on the first page. This doesn't help as much, but you do get your average heart rate. So some of it has usefulness to it. It just needs to be developed and expanded. So you see your workout for the day. Here's where you see the training load um, over the past few days. Now, this is a, a point to note. I did five days of what I would consider higher level endurance training to see how it would, it would calculate with regard to building the load. So longer workouts. So I think on Friday I did the support your box with coupled with 15 minutes of intervals on an assault bike. Um, Saturday I did an extended workout. I can't remember exactly which it was. It's on the website. All these workouts are broken down on the website. Um, yesterday I did Murph. The day before I did the Filthy 50. So it should be peaking out. Um, and the other thing that's interesting is it has a low level tracking. And I, I mean, this watch doesn't know me that well to know if this is low or not necessarily. So it should know that if I only have so many workouts total built into my history, that five days in a row of extremely harder or more endurance specific workouts should have peaked this a lot higher. And every time I wake up, it's down on the bottom again. So. Now that I've worked out for the day, it's back up, but it's not tracking the trend correctly. So I'll show you really quickly here. If you look at the overall, so this is what it was this morning. It said I was under training with a 12. So you like, yes, you worked out that day. Yes, you worked out that day. And these were harder workouts. That was Murph. That was Filthy 50. Uh, that was a long one. That was a double one. And it's not really tracking the load. So if you look at what it was on the Garmin, so the Garmin shows you this 1052 and you see the accumulation over time in the last few days my green bar went up so which is the range of optimal amount of workout to fall within to and then the uh, specific load amount went up over the course of the few days um, so here you see it just didn't quite do that um, the fitness level I think that's a really useful metric if they can break it down and explain it it does show you what they're saying in a summary screen so where you evaluate on that whole spectrum. Um, but the fitness index, I think, is, is useful information, your VO2 max, which is only tracked off a run, so you have to do a run every so often to keep that score accurate. A resting heart rate, threshold pace, lactate, those things affect runners more specifically. But this fitness level, I feel like, could be a useful tool as you evaluate, but it hasn't changed for me that much. Even in the five days of building higher level load, it should be well, I feel like it should be changing um, as my fitness level is increasing because I'm obviously carrying a heavier load and that load should be going up in a little bit more of a spike fashion. So if you look at how it evaluates a workout here, you can see, you know, in gym cardio, it gives you the workout time, the total calories. One thing I'll say about this is it has been lining up very well with Garmin. So if there's a concern about the workout a training evaluation from a singular workout versus what you would get with Garmin, which has more of a long-term history in the marketplace. It's tracking really, you know, what I would say is relatively spot on. Um, this is with the chest strap, obviously. Um, and you can see, well, I don't remember which one was uh, the Murph one, but um, yeah, this one here, which rounds. I just did a partial Murph with uh, multiple of rounds and a one mile run on each end of it. Um, and you can compare these things. So if we just go into the one from today, um, 3.7 and 1.9, you can compare it to Garmin's evaluation um, just to see, again, comparatively how it's evaluating a singular workout and the strain that it puts you under, 3.5, 1.2. So 3.7, 1.9. And they've been following right in line, which I think is excellent. I think it's great that they have that capability or that it's sort of 
relatively spot on, as well as the calorie tracking. So a lot of times people evaluate you know, watches based on are they correctly tracking ca calories. Well, this is actually coming in very close, at least in the recent tests. Um, so 507 and 483 on calories. So it's tracking singular workouts well. It's tracking the training effect and impact on your body very well. I like that you can do lap times for rounds if you're doing rounds for time. Um, but I think they need to update the uh, load calculation. So if there's any sort of minor part I think that needs growth, it's the training load because I feel like that if you look at it back on the Garmin, and we know what it said this morning, um, it was like 1,052. I don't like that you have to go into 12 levels to get to the Garmin. So you see it's it's uh, spiking here. So it's up to 1,215. So I'm, I'm spiking because I had heavier loads, especially because I did the Filthy 50 and then uh, Murph and then the workout today. And I did a five-day more endurance-based workout um, process. So that needs some improvement. Um, Overall, you see it was at nine today and it just bounced up to 45 when I think the trajectory should have stayed higher as well as gone higher with um, the added workout. So overall, I feel like it's a, a great platform, a great watch solution. As I said in previous videos, I feel like the functionality and the customization falls between Garmin and Polar. Polar more simple, Garmin uh, much more customizable. I feel like they've done a great job with this uh these first iterations of watches and how they evaluate things but i feel like it's an excellent solution for crossfit tracking if you're comfortable with the higher price point because i feel like the titanium bezel sapphire screen is really useful for banging against weights or banging against uh, barbells as well as the lightness because of the aluminum backing you know everything just feels very comfortable it's not as bulky it's not as thick doesn't have these big rivets on the side like the garmin phoenix 6 standard has um so this is just the full review for the Coros Apex Pro. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if there's anything else I can go into more detail. Thanks so much for watching on CrossFitTracking.com. And as always, the website has more stats and details.